What's going on YouTube today? This is the second part of doing the OWASP top 10 API security. And again, we are discussing the OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities a bit from the perspective of the application programming interface, what's happening behind the scenes. So today we're gonna conclude the, all the tasks. In the previous video, we have solved the first, the first four tasks and today we're going to finish the rest of the task before we go on the second part. Of this room so data excessive data exposure again I'm not I'm going to spare you the time uh, sorry I'm going to save you the time <laughs> save time on you and you don't need to read all of that I'm going to explain that in a bit so excessive data exposure so there is a URL here we're going to take this URL and explain that on the simulation so here is it here it is okay so in this channel, we have two APIs or two endpoint, API endpoints. The first one, API rule three slash comment underscore V, which happens to be the vulnerable API endpoint and one which has underscore S. Okay. So now what's going to happen here, guys? Uh, oh, okay. I think we need to add the V back. Okay. So <clears throat> here we are demonstrating and explaining the excessive data exposure vulnerability. Excessive data exposure is that when the API itself, in our case, it happens to be API rule three slash comment underscore v underscore v returns excessive amount of information more than requested. So for example, this API is responsible for returning the comments on the page for a specific uh, user or specific ID. Say I put ID one <clears throat> and I said I get request. As you can see, here, I get to see information about the username whose ID equal to one, including the comments. So that's what I'm interested in. Okay. Now, as a user who is requesting uh, or who is sending the get request, you only need to see the comment. So but unfortunately we can see other information like the id the post id device id latitude longitude and username now these information are called excessive information are returned by the api endpoints because there are no checks on the authorization level so what's going to happen here is that whenever we request a specific information about the user and we want to see the comments we see these excessive information as you can see now this is called the vulnerable API endpoint. It's sending information more than needed or more than necessary. So we call this excessive data exposure. This information can be used by attackers for various purposes, for scanning, enumeration, and so on and so forth. So we call this API vulnerable to excessive data exposure. We should, what's going to happen here from the security perspective is implementing filters so that to make sure when on this api on this api a comment underscore v when a get request is made to see the comments associated with the user id with the user whose id equal to two only the comment is returned other information are not returned unless unless the user who is requesting the or is sending the get request here okay is authorized to see this information so that's excessive api excessive data exposure now if we switch to the secure version of this api and we send another request to view the comments of the user whose id equal to one we send the get request and as you can see only see the comment so this is a case of a properly handled api okay as you can see we only see the comments now that's what we mean by excessive data exposure. That is a simple example. Okay, now let's see the questions. What's the device ID value for post ID equal to? So for post ID equal to, we're going to switch to the vulnerable endpoint. The device ID is this one. What's the username value for post ID equal to three? We put three here and we send. Username value is hacker pound character exclamation mark. Should we use network level devices for controlling excessive data exposure 
instead of managing it through APIs. So the question means here, can we use firewalls or data loss prevention solutions to prevent the excessive, this excessive information from being passed to the regular user? Um, well, the correct answer is no, but in certain cases you might need to use data loss prevention tools uh, as part of a network device like uh, IPS, firewall, so on and so forth. Now, what's going to happen is data, lo data loss prevention tools are going to check on the data that's passed outbound, inbound and outbound your network. And if there are sensitive data that's defined like credit cards, uh, financial details, they will be ruled out. But in the case of web development, it's always best to stick to API security best practices or secure coding principles. Next challenge or next vulnerability. The next vulnerability is lack of resources and rate limiting. Let's take the URL and explain there. So this is the API for today's example. Okay. And do we have another API? So underscore S underscore V. Okay, like always. So in in the case of this API, it's responsible for sending you password resets whenever you forget your password. Again, we have vulnerable API and we have the secured version of it, which ends with S. I'm going to first to handle the first one. So here we have to send first post requests because here we are re uh, requesting a password reset and the email id that we're going to use here is let's see it's test at gmail.com test at gmail.com that's the email id you should use in this task so we add a parameter email test at gmail.com so what's happening here assume that i forgot the password and I visited the URL to request a new password. I'm going to provide my email, okay? And I'm going to send a post request. An OTP code one-time password will be sent to my email to be able to reset my password. So when I send, as you can see, message four-digit OTP sent on email. So far, so far, so good. But what we mean by rate limiting is that. We limit the number of times we send the post request to request a new OTP. So if you click on send, as you can see, right, it's handling the request. Request aborted, send one more time. Yeah. So here there are there is no rate limiting. So basically what I can do in real scenario, I can just use a Python script, okay. Uh, put in the username and password and brute force until I get the right password. So here there is no rate limiting. If there is rate limiting, I would uh, like put a break, a time break between the requests, like one minute, two minutes be be before every request. So a typical example would be I sent a request to send an OTP to my email. The API endpoint or the application would need to make me wait for like one minute before sending the other request. You might see this uh, in WhatsApp, WhatsApp verification. So if you request an uh, OTP to your WhatsApp, you have to wait for like one minute, right? And then if you request again, you'll have to, the time will increase. It's gonna be like, I remember it's two minutes. And if you request more than the limit, you will have to wait 48 hours. That's what we mean by the rate limit. We have we need to limit we need to minimize the chances of brute force attacks. That's what we that's what we why we need why we use rate limiting. Now this is the vulnerable one and this is the secure one. Now here as you can see an example is you have just requested for OTP. Please wait for two minutes to request again. So the purpose of making you wait is not to make your life harder. It is just to prevent. Uh, automated scripts from uh, trying to guess the OTP or trying to send unlimited number of um, uh, brute force attacks to guess the password or the OTP and sometimes rate limit prevents or uh, actually yeah prevents the uh, denial of service attacks if you send unlimited number of requests to a web server at the end it will crash but if you implement a rate limit right 
like two minutes, three minutes, all the requests in that period will be aborted. So the web server will have time to process further requests. Can rate limiting be carried out at the network level through firewall? Yes, of course. Firewalls are able to implement rate limiting and also you can use load balancers to distribute the balance or distribute the load on multiple servers. What's the HTTP response code when we send post request to the secure endpoint using the email hr at mht.com? So we take this email and we send a post request to the secure endpoint. We get 200. What's the message key value after a hey HTTP post request to using the email address? So we use this email address to find the message invalid email yeah okay the last one will be broken level authorization we have talked about broken level authentication or broken user authentication and as you can see here it's broken function level authorization and here it's broken object level authorization they are similar in which what what happens is that you actually are a low privileged user and you can perform the actions of a high privileged user like the admin. Let's take an example. So we have this endpoint underscore v, and as you can see here, we have a couple things to uh, include in the request. We have the is admin needs equal needs to be equal to one, and we have the authorization token. So we're going to add headers convert this to get is admin needs to equal one and the authorization token is this okay yeah let's go over this so if we send, as you can see here, we get, this is the res uh, response, and we get what seems to be information about users. Like the first user is admin, the name, the address, mobile number, the role, and we have the ID for the second user, which happens to be Alice, address, mobile number, role. So what's happening here? As you can see, we are sending the request to the users underscore v API endpoint, and we have these request headers that are necessary to return this information if we put zero here as you can see nothing so is admin have to be one has to be one same for the authorization token now what's wrong with this so basically the problem here is that the is admin request header is equal to one yeah but it's included in the request headers so anyone anyone who is able to intercept the request if you use perp suite for example and you send a request to this url you will see these headers in perp suite if you know what i mean complete request header so here you will see this in perp suite so you will see this request header is admin equals to one now if you are a single user or sorry if you are a simple user um which doesn't have high privileges on the api or the website this one could be zero could be three but if you are able to play with this eventually you will you will you will um, guess the correct one and you'll read the details that's what we call broken function level authorization a broken function um, makes you makes you actually able to see the privileged information or the information that only privileged users are supposed to see so what we need to do here we either need to encode this request header okay or we don't need to include it in the request headers either don't include it or encode the value so if we put here s so as you can see here success uh, as you can see here false you are not an admin so yes, 
there is admin equals to one i got the authorization token but there are additional controls okay on the request that um concluded that i am not admin on the site so that's how it works what's the mobile number for the username alice so if you go back to the v vulnerable one and we get the information about alice everything mobile number role you just answer them here it's good practice to send is admin value through the hidden fields in the form requests and we already mentioned that guys nope we don't set these kind of um, values in the request headers or the hidden forms if we need to for like specific purposes or if it was temporary it's better to encode them or to make them random they change every time like csrf tokens an example what's the address flag of username admin it is this so this way guys we finish this and in the next video we're going to handle the next part the next part let's see the next part search hide new this is the next part okay guys i hope you like that and i will see you in the next video